Before we start talking vector addition, let's just look at some regular addition using a number line. Let's say you're trying to solve the problem um, 2 plus 4. Now, if you didn't already know the answer to this, you could start at the 0 on your number line and hop two places. That's your first number. And then from your first stopping point, you'll hop four more places, ultimately landing on 6, where 6 is the total distance from your origin point all the way to your ending point. And you can do this with a long string of numbers as well. Let's say you wanted to solve 2 plus 3 plus negative 1. Well, I'll start at 0, hop up 2. My new starting point is the 2, because that's where I ended after my first number was completed. And I'll hop 3 more. And then my final number, I'll start at this number 5, which is my second stopping point, And I'll jump back one space, and holy cow, I ended up on 4. All right. So all of this seems pretty simple and straightforward uh, until you start looking at it through the lens of vectors. You're doing pretty much the same thing, but there are a few more items to keep track of. Let's say I have two vectors, a and b. They both have different lengths, and they have different directions slightly, which means they have different angles above the horizontal. And I want to add these two together. Now, since they have different angles, I can't directly add the raw value. Let's say A is um, 2 meters and B is uh, 0.8 meters or something like that. Um, I can't just add them to get 2.8 because they're not pointing in the same direction. So to add them together, I'm just going to move things around a little bit without changing any properties. So I'm going to move B over to A without changing its length or the direction it's pointing above the horizontal. There we go. This is what's called the tip-to-tail method of vector addition. I'm treating this the same way I treated the numbers on the number line. If you remember where one number ended, that's where I started counting off the next number. Well now, where one vector ends at its tip of vector A, the next vector begins, the tail of vector B. And just like on a number line, my total answer will be the distance from where I started to where I ended. In vector addition, that's called a resultant, and I'll label that R. So it's from my very beginning to my very end. Now the trick is, how do I figure out what R is? And how do I figure out what angle R is pointing above the horizontal? Because as you remember, vectors have magnitude and direction, so I need to find both the magnitude and the direction for this vector r right here. There are a few ways to do this. One, if you happen to know the law of cosines, you are more than welcome to use it. The trick is you'd have to be able to figure out this angle in between a and b. It's doable and it's not too hard, but it takes a little bit of extra thought, especially if you're only given angles above the x-axis for both a and b. Another way to do it, and this is my preferred way, is to look at vector components. Like I mentioned in the last video, all vectors have x and y components, so let's take a look at what ax, ay, bx, and by all look like. Okay, I've kept the x's in red and the y's in blue. It's starting to get a little bit jumbled now, and I don't feel like I'm any closer to solving for r, so let me just hide the original vectors a and b real quick. That's still looking a little bit difficult, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Once again, without changing its properties, I'm just going to move vector b downward. It's still going to be pointing horizontally, and it's still going to have the same length. And I'm going to do the same thing with a y. Move it over here. And now, everything suddenly looks like a nice, neat little right triangle. Aw, and you know I love me some right triangles. To solve for vector r, all I'd need to do would be to add the bases together and add the heights together. So ax plus bx will get me the base of this triangle. ay plus by will get me the height of the triangle. 
then once I've got base and height, I can find the hypotenuse just using the Pythagorean theorem. Swanky. Not only that, I can use these two sides to figure out what angle above the x-axis my resultant is, just using right triangle trig or SOHCAHTOA. Pick your favorite trig function, take an inverse function, and rock and roll, you can solve for theta in degrees right there. Now, keep in mind, these equations that I've written down here are really only good for the picture that I've drawn here. Don't think that these are the end-all, be-all vector equations to find theta. They're not. It's worth drawing a picture, taking a look at your triangle, and remembering that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, a quick recap on the steps you need to take when doing vector addition. You already know that only identical units can be added. No rack cakes, no cup coons. Additionally, only identical vector components can be added. If vectors are not pointing in the same direction, you can't just add the numbers together. So step one, find the x and y components of both vectors. So take your first vector, break it into its x and y components using its magnitude and angle. Take the next vector, break it into its x and y components using its magnitude and angle. Do this individually. Step two, add the x components from both vectors together. Step three, add the y components from both vectors together. And now you've got the two legs of the triangle, Pythagorean theorem, the heck out of that thing. And use right triangle trig to figure out any necessary angle.